Hello, Dental A Team listeners. This is Kira Dent, and I just wanted to say thank you so much for being part of my Dental A Team family. I seriously love doing this podcast. I thought I was going to hate it, and I love it. I love it so much because I get to connect with you. I get to hear how this podcast is helping you and your practice be better. So if you have loved this podcast and you are willing to share, I would greatly appreciate if you'll share with your friends, if you'll leave us a review, if you'll give us five stars, anything you can do, just like you guys grow your practices, we're trying to grow this podcast to positively impact the world of dental. This is how we get to grow our Dental 18 family. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the Dental A Team Podcast. We're your hosts, Kira Dent. And Dr. Mark Costas. Mark and I had this crazy idea that maybe we could combine a dentist and a team member's perspective because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. And Dental A Team Podcast was created. I'm a practicing dentist, a multiple practice owner, a dental performance coach, and the founder of the Dental Success Institute. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, biller, office manager, current practice owner, and international dental consultant. Mark and I don't just understand you, we are you. Our goal is to positively impact the world of dentistry by sharing our lessons learned from the road in hundreds of dental offices. Two perspectives, one mission, to help dental professionals reach their full potential. Welcome to the Dental 18 Podcast. Hello, Dental A-Team listeners. This is Kira, and I am so excited to be bringing back one of my good friends. This girl is freaking killing it on her podcast. Every single one that she does just knocks it out of the park, and I don't blame them because she is incredible. So I'm super excited to welcome back Kristen Shepard, the incredible hygienist in New Jersey. She is the one who took her fluoride percentage from 37% to 97%. And also on her last podcast was chatting about how she actually tees up doctor treatment and is totally making her doctor's lives easier. So Kristen, welcome back today. How are you? Hey, Kira. I'm doing so good. It's so good to be back. I'm so excited. And I am even more excited because you're a hygienist that I actually get to see in person pretty regularly. And I get to see you in like almost just over a week from today. So I can't wait to come see you again. We're going to podcast live when I see you. So don't let me forget I'm bringing mics with me and it's going to be so fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so excited to see what it's like to actually do this like face to face. I'm like so <laughs> used to the, the AirPods flow. It's going to be, it's going to be cool to see you in person. It'll be so fun. So let's dive into it today. You had a really great topic that you wanted to discuss all things hygiene as always. Um, so let's just dive right into what's, what's flowing flown in your world over there in New Jersey today? Yeah, so I thought it would be um, pretty cool to talk about um, just like increasing hygiene production as well as like trying to get not even just that same day treatment as a hygienist, but getting it going for for the doctor too um, and just how to make your schedule work the best that it can. Absolutely. And can we all just everybody have a crush on Kristen right now that we want her to work for us? I mean, what hygienist comes and says like, hey, like, how can I increase my production? And how can I add same day treatment? And like, seriously, Kristen, where do you come from? And how can we make more of you in this world? Like, Honestly, as you said that, I'm like, I know you just made every doctor in this world so jealous. So let's help other hygienists be like you, because that's really the anomaly of looking for ways to add same-day treatment, increasing your production, and different things you can do. So take it away. What are some things you found that work? Some some of the wins, some of the fails. Like let's let's just dive into what you've done because I love that this is who you are as a person, genuinely, and we are able to then help the rest of the hygiene community be like you. Yeah. So this again all kind of trickles back to when um, Dr. Dan and Dr. Mila brought us to um, the dental summit with uh, Dr. Barcasis because before that, we hadn't really talked about numbers as as an office. And I never worked in an office where the owner shared any financial information with the team and the employees. So I didn't even know what the goal was. I didn't even know what I should be doing. Um, and I didn't know what like our, our, our yearly goal should be. So without knowing that, how could we possibly be trying to work for anything besides just you know, clocking in and clocking out and, and getting my paycheck. Um, but now, you know, I know what our yearly goal is and the team wants to make it not because like we're expecting this like big 
payoff, but because we're really working for something. And if we make our goal, it means that what we're doing is working and we're able to to help so many people. Totally. And I love what you just said. Like, Dr. Did you hear? How many of you don't actually talk to your teams about goals and yet your team is craving for that? They want to know that so they can help you out. Yeah. And I think um I think that a lot of doctors are probably afraid that if their their employees know what our production goal is and how much we're producing, that we're going to start, I don't know, like not even like asking for raises or anything like that, but like start saying like, oh, well, you're making all of this. So like, what am I doing here? And, you know, it's, it's so not like that when you have a good team of people, right? Um, right. Because, you know, we know that, you know, if we have a production goal of $2 million, that's not going into like their pockets. You know? Exactly. It's, like, it's no, that, running a that, business. Yeah. To me, that means job security. That means that there is like a place for me to grow with this like living organization for the rest of my career, if that's where I want to be. You know, so it's... Um, I love it's, that you just talked security, about that. Also. Because so many doctors are so scared to talk about their goals for exactly what you said, but it's the exact opposite. And I know when I was a team member, I I didn't think of this goal of like going into my doctor's paycheck. I truly did not. I just thought, okay, this is what the company needs to get to be profitable. Like that's my job. I'm going to go after it. And I understand not all people are a Kira or a Kristen in this world, but I think the bulk of team members think that way. I think a lot of us just genuinely want to help our practice be productive and help our doctors hit their goals. Like they give us a great job. Um, And I know flipping to an owner side, I feel highly uncomfortable sometimes to discuss my goals because I put emphasis and weight on, well, now they're going to think I want to make all this money. And it's very weird being on both sides of this coin of being a team member and being an employer and owning practices that I can see why doctors don't do it. But Kristen, I love that you just affirmed again how much team members we really want to know your goals so we can help you get there. If we don't know the goal and it's a secret, We're just going to come clock in, clock out and do the best we can. And there's really nothing pushing us forward to make us go after that. So I love that you talked about that was first steps. They actually shared these goals with you. And this was the first office you'd been in that actually talked goals and numbers with you. So shout out to your doctors to talk to you about that. Other doctors, don't be afraid. Look at what what that turned into Kristen and how she's able to become a rock star producer because of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, it all kind of like goes back to tracking. I mean, that's how I got my my fluoride up so much was just like tracking how often I'm doing fluoride, tracking how often I'm doing feelings. Um, now it's, you know, I have specific goals on like um, my SRP case acceptance and I do my, um, my goal for the day. I write it down every day, um, what my goal is, what I'm scheduled at. And, and recently I've been putting on my, um, my block out every day on my schedule, what I actually produce. So it's just a really good quick reference way for me to look at it every day so that when I do my reporting at the end of the month, um, I kind of know where everything is, is coming from, but it's more of just like, it's a way for me to feel really good about myself at the end of the day. And like, it's a confidence boost to see what I was actually able to turn maybe like a low schedule day Mm -hmm. into what I'm actually, what I'm actually done with it. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, besides just, you know, getting things done, it, 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 makes, it makes you feel good, you know? Well, and I love that you said that you see it. Like, I am such a visual learner that when I see things, I it becomes real and tangible. And so I love that. And I think that's such a cool idea of putting it on the schedule so you can just see it makes it easier for tracking. But I love what you started at and what you ended at. So you can really see what just a few little pieces that you've done in the day really pan out. I mean, we can talk about all day long, but I love that you have that visual on your schedule that you can see every single day. Um, I think that that creates momentum that will continue to build and grow in that direction because you're seeing it every single day, tracking it, and you know that that's just part of your end of day routine to look at that. Right. Exactly. Okay. So let's say you have a really low scheduled day. Um, You're pretty far away from goal. What are some things that you do to increase your production that day? Um, and some things that you found that work really well for you? Yeah. So, I mean, the first thing um, that I look at is, you know, I go through my morning huddle the night before. Um, So I'll have a pretty good idea unless people, you know, cancel, you know, overnight or, you know, through Zocop or something like that. Um, But I'll look at their existing treatment plan first. So if this is a patient that's coming back for recall, for some reason, we didn't get them scheduled for SRP, 
um, you know, three months ago when we saw them for the first time. That's what I'm going to focus on with them. So in the huddle, I'll have um, our TC already have the um, financial arrangement like ready. It's usually typically in there, but I just want her to make sure that it's that it's right, um, so that I can talk to the patient when they come in, see if maybe that's something that we could get going for them today. Because I have 60 minutes for a recall, so mm-hmm. I'm I'm blessed with the amount of time that I have. So regardless of they need X-rays or not, I've got them for 60 minutes. So I know that like if they agree to SRP at the beginning of the appointment, that's not going to set me behind at all. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I look I look for that. I look for are there seals that are treatment plan. Um, I look to see if I have notes written on um, patients who's interested in lightning because again that I don't necessarily need to be with them if they're doing lightning. You know, I can set it up and I can have an assistant change the lightning gel and they're just in a room while I'm working on my other patients, you know? Sure. Um, so looking for anything that we've already talked to the patient about is just like a good head start. Um, but seeing if anything else is coming up in in the actual appointment when I'm seeing them, you know, because now, you know, if, if we kind of go back to like my first episode with you six months ago, I wasn't really doing any fluoride. I wasn't doing almost any sealants on adults. Mm-hmm. So now I'm seeing patients, you know, six months later and I'm like, oh, you know, these teeth actually would be great candidates for sealants. You know, mm-hmm. is this something that interests you? Let's, let's do your fluoride treatment. This is something that we're offering our patients now. Um, so, you know, if, if a hygienist goal is, say, um, 3.3 times their their hourly rate, and say you're getting paid $45 an hour, you're, you're doing fluoride at $45. I mean, that's taking a 1x off of your goal just right. from there. Uh huh. That's, a, <laughs> you know, that's a really good way like to think of that. The easiest way, yeah. Um, so, and again, it's, I mean, it's not pushing things that aren't necessary. But if I can do a fluoride treatment in one sealant, and That's my trophy, a, I'm pretty much already on my, my goal for that hour. I love that you think about that in that way. Like you literally just broke that apart of like, okay, if I need to do 3.3 times my pay, how do I get there? Profi, um, doing my my fluoride and one sealant. That's right there. That's how I get my three times my pay right there. Um, and I yeah. love that you think about it blocked into sections like that because that breaks it down to make it very simple as opposed to like, well, how am I ever going to get X amount? People do it and they do it on PPO fees. They do it on fee for service fees. They do it on HMO Mm -hmm. fees. So I'm like, if someone's done it, there's got to be a way that you listener can do this as well. So Chris, and I love that you've broken that up into, into that. And I love that you've talked about fluoride, sealants. Um, what other things? I also think like, I don't know, I've never been a hygienist, but in my mind, I would think, one, an SRP would make my day really dreamy because I'm not doing a profi all day long. It's clearly, I like variety in my day. Um, mm-hmm. But I feel like SRPs and different areas like that, whitening, like you said, night guard impressions. But I would want to, I would want to make sure I'm really diagnosing perio as well to try and get like one perio, one SRP a day if I could. I think, or even like one or two a week feels like it would break up the monotony. I don't know if it's monotonous. I'm not trying to offend any hygienists out there, but I would feel like that would just make your day better and it's really great patient care. But what's your take on that? Oh my God. Yeah. If if I have a scaling in my schedule, I know pretty much whatever happens, like I'll be good. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like the golden um, ticket in your schedule. <laughs> yeah. Because so the way that we do billing in our office is um we're technically an out of network provider, but for all of our preventative care, you know, our x-rays and exams and trophies, we take the in-network fee. Mm-hmm. So our fee for trophy is $160, but we're probably, you know, on average, what we get paid on it is like 75 bucks. Right. So, but for Perio, we charge out of network. So I know every single SRP that I do, we're getting 740. Wow. So, so that's, you know, that's a big chunk of my, of my goal. And, you know, I'm a, a believer in not pushing what does and does not need SRP. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to like fudge four millimeter pockets into five millimeter pockets. I'm not going to, um, you know, pretend there's bleeding on probing if there's, if there's not. Right. Um, and we're in an area that's a younger population. So we're not that heavy on, 
on perio, but today I did six quads of SRP. Wow. That and, was a solid day for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And only, only one of them was scheduled yesterday. Wow. So, How did you convert that? Talk about that. Let's talk yeah, about this. This is a solid day yeah, for you. So, let, so, so let's talk about that. So, um, six quads, that's insanity. I want, <laughs> I want to be clear that I, I don't rush my SRPs. Mm -hmm. Um, and if I have a new patient that needs scaling, I won't do it unless I know I have time. I will okay. reschedule that appointment. I like but that. today. It so just, it's ethical. Yeah. We're not doing anything crazy town. And I love no. that you're not pushing treatment that doesn't need to be there. And I've seen you, Kristen, you don't, you, I've seen you in real life. You don't push things that aren't necessary. And you're very, very thorough. Cause some hygienists, I will say, I've watched some that do like speedy profies in less than like 20, 30 minutes. And I definitely do a double take like, wow, that was really fast. Like that was impressively fast. Right. I, I can't judge. I've never done your job, but I do know that Kristen, you take your full hour. You're very thorough. You're very detailed, but you also are super efficient. I think with your time, um, I think you just think ahead about five steps, like what's going to happen, putting it in a proper sequence. So every minute actually is maximized as opposed to wasting minutes. I think that that's how you yeah. do a difference. Okay. So let's talk. Yeah. How'd you convert two SRPs today that were not on your schedule yesterday? So um, this morning I had like a godsend of a new patient. I mean, she was just one of these women that's like her presence with you. It's just, it just makes you so happy. And she was Aww. just like, I just felt like we just like connected, you uh -huh. know? And uh -huh. she came in and, and she was like, you know, I used to, she's like, I had a teeth cleaning in the past. I haven't been to the dentist in like over a year. I've had a lot of like personal things kind of come up. Um, so she's like, you know, I just want to make sure that my gums are still okay. Um, and you know, we went through it and I was like, let's well, yeah, like, you know, we need to do, do the teeth cleaning again. Um, I have time now. Do you want to do it? And she's like, let's go for it. So awesome. it was a very like just fluid type of, um, type of transition. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if I feel like a patient is really concerned about teeth or if they have really extensive treatment. Mm -hmm. that they're going to also have to come back for like restorative. Um, I'll probably not push for doing the scaling the same day because I want them to be fully informed of everything that's, that's going on that is going to impact them financially. Sure. You know? sure. Um, so, but with, with this patient, it was just like really easy. She didn't need a lot of restorative um, on her. I did um, the two quads and typically like what I'll do is, um, I'll tee it up with uh, our treatment coordinator. She'll have the FA ready so that once the patient says like, yep, let's go, she can go over the fees with her. I'll then jump in and anesthetize. And then I'll have the doctor do the exam while the patient is waiting to get numb. Mm -hmm. That way it's not taking out, you know, all of this extra time. Because again, I had 90 minutes. Right. But in my first like 20 minutes was treatment planning, then going over the FA then anesthetizing and then getting to the dam. So it still leaves you with 40 minutes to scale. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and if she was a patient that was like really, really heavy and I knew I needed like that solid hour of like scaling time, mm -hmm. I would have rescheduled her to, sure. to another day. But, but this just worked. But I love that you see it as the patient is a patient and they don't all fall into a 60 minute or 40 minute template you can assess that. And what I think I hear more than anything that I think is like the resounding piece as to why you are who you are beyond just being an incredible human being. I hear you always looking for how you can make it happen today. Like I'm going to see what I can do today. I want to make a great opportunity for this patient today. Like that is literally your mindset. And I hear it in everything you do. Like, well, I could do sealants today. I could do fluoride today. Like let's do an SRP today. Everything in your makeup, in your thoughts, in your in your speech, even without you trying, I don't think that was even planned, but I'm hearing so much of that today of let's do this today. And I think that that's the difference. I see a lot of hygienists. And again, I'm just saying this with all the love today, but and I, that's definitely me saying like, I'm sprinkling this with sugar because I'm about to say something sour. Like I do see some hygienists who say like, eh, I'm not going to get that in today. Like I know I could reschedule them. I think your mindset, Kristen, is like, how could I make this work today? How could I like, there is time that I could do this without compromising patient care, but how can I actually make this be a yes today? 
obviously, if we can't, we can't, but you're constantly looking for how could you make this work? And I think because that's become more of your mantra, more of your style, you see it so often, which is why your production's increased, which is why you do same day treatment. That's just from an outsider's opinion. Like, what's your take on that? What do you, do you agree? Do you disagree? Like, what do you feel when I say that? Oh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I totally agree. Like, if, if I know I have the capacity, then why not? But I'm also not going to do anything that's going to jeopardize, like, my patient's well-being or my own. Mm-hmm. You know, so the other day I was, um, I was talking to Dr. Dan and Dr. Mila, and they were like, do you really need a, a full hour for your recall business? Like, is that really necessary? Because, you know, you're finishing, you know, sooner if they're not, if they don't need anything else. And I'm like, you know what? I do. I really do need that hour because it gives me the time to talk about the things I need to talk to them about, to go over home care. And also for me to like have mental health, <laughs> I can't, I'm not going to jump from room to room to room to room to room without anywhere to breathe at all. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's also like being realistic with yourself. But if you don't have that time with your patient, you can recommend everything you want to. But how are you going to have the time to do it mm-hmm. on them that day? Sure. Absolutely. You know? So, yeah, if we're talking same day feelings and, you know, or same day scaling or same day lightning, if, if you don't have the time, you just don't have the time because you're not going to let your schedule break down just because you're trying to hit your goal or you're, you know, you're trying to do this. So mm-hmm. having mm-hmm. some breathing room in there, I think is, is really important. Um, and doing what's going to help the patient. Like this patient I was just talking about from this morning, she, um, she's a busy woman. Like she's a nurse. She has like a really big, busy family life. Like we couldn't get her in for a couple of weeks for her next side of scaling. So we were able to like maximize her insurance benefit for this year, maximize her day because she doesn't have to, Mm-hmm. come back a needless time i so love it it's, it's a win-win it's totally good. totally and i also like i want to spin back to that 60 minute appointment i get asked this question a lot like kira should we do a 45 minute appointment 40 minute appointment 60 minute appointment should we do assisted hygiene there's so many different opinions out there and i think that whatever works for your practice is ideal but i really am pro if you can make it work and hygienist if you can maximize those 60 minutes I pushed heavily for a 60-minute profi. Um, and the reason why is because I feel like if you have hygienists, similar to what Kristen has talked about on past podcasts and today, looking like, Kristen, I, I, don't, I'm not, I don't live in your brain, but I imagine your brain, like as soon as they sit down, you're looking to say, like, okay, what things do they need today? How do I maximize this appointment and maximize their time so they have the best experience and I'm also... Like, I almost feel like in your mind, it's like a mental checklist. Like, do they need sealants? Do they need fluoride? Do they need whitening? Do they need SRP? Like, it's almost like you check through the list to look for all the opportunities at the beginning of the appointment in a very proactive manner. Um, And I feel like that's why I like a 60-minute appointment because you do have time, but it's the hygienists who don't maximize those 60 minutes that really make the dentist think, well, do we really need these 60 minutes or could we shave it down to 45? Like, they're not utilizing any additional time. But man, those hygienists, our hygienists would sell treatment left and right for our doctors because they spent those 60 minutes educating, looking for opportunities to make sure they maximize in hygiene, also teeing up treatment for our doctors like you talked about in the last last one. But I really feel if I can put a plug out there, 60 minute hygiene appointments are my favorite if the hygienist maximizes their appointment like you've been talking about today, Kristen. Oh yeah, I wouldn't want to or expect them to happily pay me if I was, you know, taking 30 minutes and then like walking out of the room and, you know, sitting down or, or whatever. And I do um, see no, that. I try, I I try do to get as much. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so it's only fair. I, you know? <laughs> right. Totally. No, that is totally fair. But I do love this. Okay. So to maximize your production, I love like, let's recap this. So you put your, your starting and your ending production on the schedule every single day. You look for flooring <laughs> opportunities. I love that you talked about breaking down your 3.3 times your pay into tangible little pieces like fluoride. That's one chunk. A profi is another chunk. And then doing um, one sealant is another chunk. Like that makes up your three times your pay every single hour. So you've broken it down into those little quads. I also love that you talked about converting same day SRPs. If you've got the opportunity to do it without compromising patient care, do it. Get that ready to go. And then also talking in morning huddle 
all the financial arrangements that need to be ready to go. So you, and I love that you said you, Kristen, like the hygienist is talking to the patient about treatment plans, is talking to the patient about this. You know how to do that. And I think that that liberates you and makes it so you can maximize those 60 minutes so much better than if you're waiting on the financial coordinator to do that for you. So those are like my takeaways. Was there anything else you wanted to add in for how you maximize production or to clarify any of those four things I just listed off? Um, no, you pretty much got it. I mean, it's once you get into the the swing of it and once you become comfortable talking to your patient and letting them know like this will be out of pocket, but you know, using all of like your verbiage that we've talked about already, like just doing it over and over again, it becomes like second nature. And then you realize that you're not trying to like upsell and you're not trying to like take money from your patient. You're really very honestly helping them. Mm -hmm. Um, So how did you you get that mind shift change? Kristen, like how did you mind shift change that? Cause so many hygienists think like I'm upselling, I'm doing this. And you just said, it's not, it's really just helping my patient. How did you have that mind shift? Was it just like you jumped in and started trying it? Like what happened to help you get over that hump? Because I think a lot of that, a lot of hygienists I meet struggle with that. No, because, you know, I actually started seeing how um, happy and receptive my patients were after they were, you know, getting treatment on the same day and having a foreign treatment that's going to help them prevent the need of fillings in the future. And it was really like seeing that they were getting something out of it and not just, and not just me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Kristen, I will say one thing I love about you that I would challenge all listeners in whatever position you're in, you jump in and you try it and then see the results. You're like, okay, they said that the fluoride would work. Like, I'm going to try that. Okay. We talk about being able to do three point times. Like I'm going to try to do 3.3 times my pay and I'm going to see what happens and see what results it is. And you literally turned into exactly what we see of those happy patients that otherwise we would have missed out on. Oh, yeah. Or even like them just having the opportunity to know that there was something that was never offered to them before. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, they're not going to do for it if they never, if they didn't even know it was an option. Ugh. So making them have that choice. Totally. We talk about this all the time. Guys, I was the patient that was never offered fluoride because my hygienist just conveniently thought I didn't need it. Like, come on. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. Like, educate me, people. I can't tell you how many times I go to the dentist. I'm cure dent, guys. Like, I know I'm not cure dent to everybody, but to those of you listening, like, I do a lot of dentistry. My last name for crying out loud is dent. Like, offer me fluoride. Offer me fluoride just because my name says dent in it. I, every single time I go in, (laughs) They do not offer me fluoride. Every time yeah. I go to the dentist, I am not offered fluoride. I don't get it. I don't get it. You have yeah. a captive person ready to say yes to you. You just don't open your mouth and ask. And that's all it is. Yeah. I would say yes every time and they never offer it to me. I'm always like, hey, do you guys do fluoride? And they're like, oh yeah, did you want it? And I'm like, not now because I'm just going to go get it for free the next time I go visit an office because you didn't <laughs> offer it to me. Like it's so ridiculous, but that's because I know I'm an educated yeah. person in dentistry where most people are not. So I love that you offer because I will tell you guys, most people don't know what you can do. And if you don't offer it, they'll never be able to say yes to you because they don't even know it's an option. Exactly. Oh, Kristen. Well, you are so kind. You've taken time away from your office Christmas party. So we're going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for your tips on how to increase production. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you guys just got some solid nuggets. And Kristen, as always, You are the unicorn of hygiene, and I love that you're willing to share what you do real life so other people can become just like you. And so thank you. Thank you so much for taking time and being on the show with me today. Uh, Kira, it's a pleasure as always. I can hear everybody in the in the next room enjoying their uh, (laughs) their, their food and drink. So you definitely need to go get in there. Get in on that. This is a lot of fun too. This is a lot of fun too. (laughs) We'll podcast when I see you in a couple of weeks. So Kristen, thank you so much. All right. Sounds good, Sarah. (laughs) All righty. Dental A Team listeners, thank you. And I'll catch you next time on the Dental A Team podcast. And that wraps it up for another episode of the Dental A Team podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll talk to you next time. 